This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Packs of wolves are pouring across Europe, west from Russia to Portugal, north from Italy to Norway, in fact, in all directions. But can we live with them? These ancestors of the domestic dog, our best friend. Wolves are certainly cute when they're tiny, like these fortunate rescued pups. But when they grow up, milk won't do. It could be a deer, wild boar, or a sheep, and that's when the trouble starts. They must kill to live. From the highest mountains to the farms below, wild wolves and domestic dogs share our lives. This white, snowy Samoyed has been part of Arctic human life for ages. Its fur has been vital in its survival in some of the coldest places on the planet. Well equipped with good eyesight, hearing and a sense of smell. And in Italy, sheep dogs plus spikes are alert to wolves which are only really tempted by the farmed prey we provide. It's up to us to work out ways of helping domestic and wild dogs live together. Certainly dogs can help us, the blind, and in this case a sort of wolf, an Alsatian. A police dog that saved the life of policeman Dave Wardell, who had been knifed. And Finn got knifed too, 30 stitches. Dave Wardell slept on a camp bed by his side for a month as he nursed Finn back to fitness. Finn's now retired. Great credit to a kind of wolf. So, friend or foe, German shepherd dog or wolf. As they say, the wolf has had a bad press ever since the little Red Riding Hood story broke and we have changed their lives in many other ways too. Not only have we shot, trapped and poisoned them, but we've completely transformed their home. The little swift fox of the North American prairies has nowhere to go because the whole landscape is now man-made. This classic archive footage will reveal how man can help a species, turn a loser into a winner, in fact. He hunts prairie dogs, not actually a dog, but a rodent. So without a food supply, he can't survive. But that can change, or be changed, as we'll see, through this survey of some of the world's 35 canids, as they're called. From the stumpy bush dog of the tropical rainforest, to the elegant maned wolf that strides the Brazilian savannas, always alert for mice and insects. And at night in deserts of the Middle East, the fennec fox, with ears all the better to hear you with, listens for similar prey. But the star of this show, the Arctic Fox, is one that can survive in the harshest conditions and has a coat to prove it, well up to a point. That is, until it changes colour with the season. Or 
the man takes that white fur for his own greedy reasons. In 2018, millions of television viewers saw this, fortunately only briefly, crazed, confined Arctic foxes farmed for the fur trade. In the wild, these little hunters and scavengers roam far and wide. And as the season starts to change, and the melting snow fills the streams and lakes, they will start to change too, to match their surroundings. But that's not as easy as it might seem. Because the snow is white, but the melted patches are not. So the timing of camouflage is tricky, to say the least. So it's to and from safety. We'll reconstruct the wanderings of this one as she searches for food of any sort. But not these. Though, as we've seen, carnivores like wild dogs and wolves are usually seen as threats to livestock. But we do love dogs too. to the archive on the North American prairies. Some dedicated people also love wild dogs. The Swift Fox project continues with the release into one of the fragments of wild prairie not ploughed up in this crops and cattle country. It's going to be a very different world out there. The price of fur has often been the death of the owner, and an increasing number of people feel strongly that it looks better on the original owner than the wearer ultimately responsible for that death. The Scottish wildcat, with its distinctive furry tail, and others like the leopard and tiger, may be persecuted for the fashion industry. These animals are sensitive and usually frightened of humans, and it's hardly surprising that they are so shy. But if the Arctic fox is not hunted, it can become quite tame, especially when food is hard to find. And some say fake fur is the answer. But the fact is that some fake fur is real fur. And you could be wearing a domestic cat or a rabbit. It's an industry worth millions of pounds, costing millions of lives both in the wild or farmed. No wonder TV viewers were shocked to see the conditions for wide-ranging animals driven mad in confinement. So different from out there on the prairies, plus food, where the Swift Fox project continues. And that brings surprises for the newly released Hope for the Future, when more Swift Foxes will be brought here. He's learning to stalk prairie dogs, which are very careful, as well as foxes to contend with. There are rattlesnakes in their burrows. 
a whole new experience for an inquisitive fox. That's a warning that should be heeded. an American Badger. Final surprise, perhaps a territorial gesture in the fox's home of the future, maybe. Our Arctic fox marks her territory, looks around and moves on, always searching for signs of others, perhaps a mate. And in winter, she's usually hungry. Furry feet help, though the thaw continues and her white coat and tail make her conspicuous. Camouflage gone. The ducks are still frozen out of the lake, though they seem to be getting active, as if spring is in the air, which it is. The fur of the arctic fox provides the best insulation of any mammal. And it's amazing what feathers can do. Neither ducks nor foxes hibernate. But if a fox can get a bird, dead or alive, it will. And it also stores food underground in the summer, when there are lots of eggs and chicks to bury. In the shelter of the trees, forest reindeer wear a coat that Arctic people treasure. The Lapland Sami of Norway and Sweden herd their reindeer and use them sustainably for meat and hides, a sort of farming, and quite unlike what others do to Arctic foxes. A wolf. The Sami hate them, a threat to their beloved reindeer. But wolves are built to survive, not only with fur against the cold, but with those super senses that all dogs have. An effective combination of ears, eyes and smell. The wolf can also live in deserts and have much less fur. And this one will lose his winter coat soon. as the ice is now melting fast, revealing the tundra underneath. Home to the wolverine, prized for its fur and feared for its strength, being able to run down and kill prey larger than itself, say a reindeer. Sometimes an arctic fox, much easier. It's one thing to be killed by a wolverine out in the wild, but quite another to be tortured and put to death after this prison. And now for some good news. The archive on the swift fox on the North American prairies shows successful breeding and that has continued. In fact, the project is one of the most successful endangered reintroductions in the world 
certainly turning a loser into a winner. Tail biting is all part of play, learning how to grab a prairie dog perhaps. But practicing on your mother affects her looks. At last she's found some food, and spring means she's survived another winter on the run. Taking that valuable coat and tail behind her, and more vital to her than anyone else. Yes, we love our dogs. And the Arctic fox is a dog, a remarkable survivor in some of the most hostile environments on Earth. And that includes the hunters and trappers of Iceland, where traditionally they feared for their livestock including eider ducks and other seabirds. But the Arctic fox must kill to live. Some areas are now protected, and even an Arctic fox museum has been set up for visiting tourists. And that's more good news. Well, what do Arctic foxes dream about? Could it possibly be Brian May at number 10? Queen of the Frozen Arctic Fox and Friends 400,000 signatures The city of San Francisco has banned fur Don't stop now or a nightmare Someone like fashion designer Carl Lagerfeld and others perhaps. Like the now melting snow, time is now running out for the fur trade.